Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a basic backend application using Vapor and Swift language. So to start off, let me give you guys an introduction to Vapor. So basically Vapor is a web framework for Swift which enables you to create RESTful APIs and web applications. It works on macOS and Ubuntu and includes packages for authentication and front-end development as well as packages for all the popular database management languages such as SQL and Postgres, MongoDB, all of those. So why exactly would you guys be using Vapor? Well, to begin with, you get to use Swift. And if you're already an iOS developer, Vapor would enable you to get the services up and running as you can work on the iOS app as well as the APIs yourself. And as you are already familiar with language, you'd be very comfortable and the learning curve shouldn't be that steep and you'll be able to get things to work pretty quickly. Another benefit of using Swift for writing your backend is that because it is a compiled language, apps written, it, written in Swift are likely to perform better than the interpreted language. And I think a final reason would be that Swift is a type safe language and it removes a lot of problems that you would have using JavaScript framework. Now, to get started with setting up the Vapor, open up Terminal and you need to type this exact command that I'm typing. Now, Vapor uses Homebrew to install the toolbox. Now if you don't if you guys don't have homebrew installed, I'd recommend going to brew.sh page and copying and pasting this in the terminal and running that command. I have homebrew installed, so I can just proceed with the next steps. So next we're gonna have to type brew tap vapor slash tap. This would download the vapor framework. This might take a few minutes. After that is done, type brew install vapor slash tap slash vapor to install the vapor framework. After this, Vapor will be installed in your system. Now, the process of setting up Vapor is a little complicated. You have to get all the, there, there's a number of files required and you have to set up the directories in the right way. But I'm sure you'll get, you guys will get a hang of this. Now, to get started, first we'll make a directory named Vapor in our home directory. So, I'll just use mkdir vapor and they shall create the vapor directory in our home now I'll just CD to that great now we're in here now to create a project we'll just initialize using this command vapor new and I'll call my project hello vapor This might take a while. So once that is done, you'll see this Vapor logo. Now to build and start your app, I'll just go to the hello world directory, hello Vapor directory, Vapor build. So once that is done, you can just run the command vapor run. So this will start up our server and you can just copy this address and go to your browser slash hello. And you'll see 
our app is running. Great. So one thing you'll notice if you open the directory is that even though our project is running, there is no Xcode file in this. So this is deliberately done as in a Vapor project, the Xcode file would continuously be discarded and regenerated. So now let's create our own routes. You can just type Vapor Xcode hyphen by, and this will open our Xcode file. So make sure in your Xcode toolbar to select the run and my Mac. Now, if you build and run your project here, now our project is running. So we can just check this again on our browser. There, yeah. So this is running, I can stop it right now. So now you can go to the roots file. And here, see currently we are running this URL. So uh, we can add another route here. You just write router.get. Hello, comma, people. I'll just type hello paper. So here, as you can see, anything that you put next to get will become a part of the URL itself. So if I've put vapor here, and I'll just run this file again. Now I'll need to specify slash wave. So now we have created a new URL. Great. We can stop the survey. So throughout the series, I'll be using the Postman app to test out my APIs. You guys can also use the Rested app, which is available for free on the App Store. But I prefer to use the Postman app. And if you want to download the Postman app, you can just go to postman.com and you can get this for free. All right, so back to our application. Now let's make our first post request. So here at the end of the roots file, I'll just create a struct named user info. And this inherits the content class. And it has a name, which is a string. Yes. So here, right after I created this get request, I can just create a post request. So this piece of code would create a post request and uh, its endpoint would be user. So let's go ahead and run our app. Right. 
So we can just test this out on the Postman app. Localhost flash user because user is our endpoint and since this is a post request it requires some kind of parameter which we can add here as json type so as we can see we got the response hello steve and Steve was the name that we sent in the request. So what's happening here is, this is creating a request which will return a string. And we're displaying that spr string as in the response. So we can stop this server from now.